In this video, I'm gonna share with you three things I love about web design, three things I hate about web design, and whether or not it's a good career choice right now. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist, and today we're gonna to discuss about web design career choices. Now, before we get started, when we say web design and web designer, many people interpret these terms in very different ways. So a web designer used to be the person just doing the design in Photoshop, but nowadays it can mean the person building the website. So when I talk about web design and web designers, I'm talking about the people actually building the website but with a creative background. So let me start by the thing that I absolutely love about web design. Number one, it's exciting, especially if you are a creative person, because let's face it, if you're not creative and you're just trying to get into web design, you're not gonna stand long. But if you are creative, this is like the dream job. This is like the dream career because you get to be creative and you get paid for it. And it's not just about web design. It's also about branding, marketing, it's about video, photo, audio. There are many different things that come into a well-built professional website. And even if you don't plan on becoming a videographer or an audio engineer, it's still nice to play with other creative fields. Who knows? Maybe you're gonna love it. The point being, it's not a boring job. And talking about boring jobs, I have one of my friends that used to work in the bank. Now. Don't get me wrong, if you love working in the bank, I don't want to offend you. I'm just saying for me, as a creative person, I don't see myself behind a desk and just typing numbers and answering emails about credit, that kind of stuff. It's just not my field. Once again, nothing wrong if you love that. But there are many fields where people just go to get a job because they just need to pay the bills, they don't enjoy what they're doing, and they're just sitting behind the desk and doing repetitive tasks. Now, when it comes to web design, it's the total opposite. There are so many things to do. Now, granted, some parts are not as fun as the design part, and that's the price to pay. But when it comes to the fun part, I mean, that's a lot of the job, actually. Basically, you're gonna get paid to use your creative juices. And it's happened to me so many Many times where I think I've just spent like two hours and basically I spent eight hours. So if you're working a nine to five, I mean, five is gonna come really quick. The thing you have to understand in that industry is that working strictly nine to five doesn't really work because you're working with inspiration. So some days you're not gonna get inspired and it might take you a while, just like a creative block. But I already covered that in another video on how you can overcome the creative block. Now, once you get the inspiration, this is perfect. The days are gonna go so fast, you can't get bored with web design. Unless, of course, you are a web designer for one company and they always ask you the same repetitive task. But if that happens, you still have the option to look for another company or maybe just go and work for an agency or maybe start your own agency and that's gonna be so much fun. Now, another great thing when it comes to web design is that all projects are different. And that's the great thing about web design. Even if you can work for the same industries, but for this project, there's gonna be a little something that makes it a bit more challenging. And that's the exciting part because as a creative person, you want to be challenged. You don't wanna do the same thing over and over again. And that's where it's fun. Maybe one day you're gonna work, I don't know, for an auto repair shop. Then the next day you work for a lawyer, then for a doctor. And that's what I love about this industry. I don't get bored because I get to meet new industry. I get to meet new people. I get to face new challenges. And that's what I love about it. Two, another thing I absolutely love about web design is the fact that it can change your life. And no, I'm not exaggerating. It can literally change your life. Because first of all, in web design, degrees don't actually matter. So you can be without a degree and actually start living very comfortably when you get into the web design game if you become a good web designer. Now, if you're just starting out, don't feel overwhelmed because channels like my channel and similar channels on YouTube actually teach you how to become a professional web designer. So it's an exciting time to live in because when I got started, there was no YouTube. Yeah, I know. It's a long time ago, but basically you had to go to get an education or buy books and there was no way you could learn it for free. You had to pay for it. So now it's a great time to get started. Now, going back to why it can change your life. Well, some time ago here on the channel, I did another video with another YouTuber, Jeffrey. And by the way, if you're interested about whether or not you should do cold emailing, go ahead and watch that video. But basically we did that video and I got to know Jeffrey when I stumbled upon his video where he said that web design changed his life because you need to know that Jeffrey used to be homeless. He used to live in Los Angeles. He was living in Skids Row. Basically, it was in a really low place with like no hope. And then he got to learn that by using his creativity, he could actually 
get a career, get his life back. And that's why he did. And this is so, so inspiring. So no, I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying that it can change your life. So you can basically have nothing, didn't even finish high school. But if you work for it, if you want to use your creativity and you want to put in the work to learn how to become a professional web designer, which once again, you can do here online on YouTube for free. If you do this, then you can change your life, you can turn your life around. But maybe you do have a degree, maybe you work in a bank and maybe you hate your life because you don't like this type of job. Once again, no hate for working in the bank, I'm just giving the example so that you can better understand what I'm trying to explain. But basically you could be an engineer, you could work in a pharmacy and maybe you don't like what you're doing, even if you studied for it. So at one point in life, you might decide, okay, I wanna turn my life around, I wanna do something that I actually love. And if you are a creative person, like I said, web design is great because it mixes graphics, audio, video, a lot of different things. And I've seen so many people that did a 180 degree turn like a U-turn and they completely changed what they were doing. So yeah, I love that about web design. Three, another thing I absolutely love about web design is the sheer number of opportunities and freedom it can give you. So first of all, web design is connected with a lot of other industries like video production, audio production, marketing, you name it. There are so many different fields. So if at one point you feel like, okay, you love web design, but you're also really good with video. And as we all know, video is becoming so big right now that even in the web design industry, the use of video is growing and growing and growing. And just imagine that you start doing video production because maybe you hired as a web designer, but you also also need to take care of video, photo, and maybe a lot of different things. And let's say that you start falling in love with making videos. Well, because you're in that industry, it's going to be easy for you to transition or maybe to keep both, do web design and video. Like I said, there are so many opportunities. It's just crazy. Now, web design also gives you a lot of freedom creatively first, because as a web designer, you get to decide the direction you want to use, unless of course you work in a bigger team, maybe a bigger company, an agency, and there's an artistic director and you need to follow some directions. But even with the directions, you get a lot of freedom to play with what you want to play with, be it fonts, colors, there's a lot of different things that people expect from you. They expect you to be creative. So if you're just a web designer and you just do what you're told and you never try to do something different. For example, when I used to work for an advertising agency, even when I got a very specific brief, so I would do according to the brief, but I would also do one version according to me and my creative flow. And a lot of times what I did creatively was the final choice. I followed the brief first, but then I put in my own creative juices. And that's what people expect from you. They expect your creativity to make a difference. Now, if you choose the freelance or entrepreneur routes, then freedom takes another dimension because you get to decide when you work. And for example, if you want to go and take a swim in the middle of the day, you can do it. Because web design, once again, it's about creativity. So sometimes during the day, I don't feel inspired and I prefer to work at night or it could be early in the morning. And that's what I love about web design because it gives me the freedom to allocate time slots as I see fit. And I know that's almost the case for any industry when you are your own boss, but you get the idea. Now, let's talk about the things I hate about web design. Well, it's gonna be easy. Nothing. Nah, just kidding. That would be nice, but fortunately, nah. Now, the first thing I absolutely hate about creating websites, whether it's for your boss or for clients, is running after the content because you keep running and running after the content. And just imagine this, how can you actually plan something? You don't know. So let's say that you're expecting content for one website, two or three websites, and you don't get the content. How will you know how many more jobs you can actually take? Because think about this. So for three months, you hear nothing and you're running after the clients or after your boss or after the department from which you need to get the content. And then at the last minute, they all come together and say, here's the content and we need it ready for next week. But maybe next week you already have other projects that you had to work on. So how do you cope with this? How do you juggle with all the different projects and the content that you get always, always at the last minute? So for example, I have a client that paid me in full for a website three years ago. I'm not kidding, three years ago. So basically what happened, I followed the due process. And then at one point I was waiting for the content for more than six months. I said, listen, all the design is done. I need to get paid now because everything is done. I'm just waiting for the content. And one thing to know is that because they had no time to actually 
create the content, I introduced him to a copywriter. So he said, fine, that would be great. But the thing is, he never got the time to actually meet the copywriter. And that's why we didn't get the content. So because he was a really good and honest client, he paid me in full. And I told him, by the time you get the content, give me the content. I will replace the lower Ipsum text and the stock photos and videos that are on the website. But it's been more than three years actually, and I still haven't got the content. So I actually stopped. I tried a few times, but I like abandoned. Now I was really lucky because it was a honest client that paid me in full. But sometimes, and actually many times, if you are a freelancer, and especially if you're getting started, you're not gonna get paid. So you've worked like 80 or 90 or 95 or even 100% of what you had to do, but you only got paid maybe 50%. And that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel good. So I absolutely hate running after the content. This is one of the most painful thing in the job. And I have a few ideas. One of my ideas is that I'm gonna start putting in my contracts a deadline. So basically it will say, after this deadline, if I haven't received the content, then the money you've put forward is lost. And if you want me to complete the project, you need to repay for the project. So legally, I can do it. I need to see with lawyers what can be and can be done. But on a commercial side, on a commercial note, it's not gonna be nice to deal with this, with the clients. So I'm still looking for the perfect solution, but if you heard about the perfect solution, let me know in the comments. Now, the next thing I hate about web design is the undervalued perception. And let me explain. Because there is a low barrier to entry, which can be good as we've seen, but because there is a low barrier to entry, there are many people that come to the industry and they identify as web professionals, when the reality is they are not totally ready for prime time. They charge super cheap, and since clients get what they pay for, it brings a bad reputation to the whole industry. So if you are a professional that just lands a new client, but that client has been previously with other web professionals that didn't know what they were doing, the bad reputation leaks on you. They come into the relationship really skeptical and already undervaluing your worth. Now, on another note, another problem is the fact that there are so many different profiles like web designer, web developer, web marketer, WordPress consultant, and so on. So a lot of clients, they don't really know what it's all about. And for them, you're just the computer guy. So basically they see your job as, okay, it's the computer guy. You can fix keyboards, you can build a website. And they don't understand that there's a particular craft when it comes to building websites. You need to know about security. You need to know about design. You need to know about at least front end development, especially nowadays, even though I know previously web designer was just doing the design in Photoshop, but you know, this time is way past. Now you need to know at least CSS, HTML, and I know there are exceptions if you work in a team, but you get the idea. You need to know things about marketing, you need to know things about conversion. So it's a really complex craft. And don't be scared because like I said, it's a great career, but it's complex. And if the clients just see you as the IT guy, well, he can, he can do this, he can fix this. They feel like even their nephew could do it. Their 12 year old nephew could actually build a website with Wix and they see you as, yeah, just the IT guy. And maybe you're not an IT guy. Maybe you are a designer that absolutely love web design and you got to learn here on YouTube or elsewhere. Maybe you got some additional education and you master a lot of different things and that's what you want to be paid for. That's how you want to be valued and they don't see you like this. And if they don't see you like this, they won't want to pay what you're worth. And like I mentioned, because of services like Wix, and I don't want to hate on Wix, they have a good business model for them and I don't want to judge them, but I'm just saying as a professional, when I'm trying to understand what the client thinks, it's the jungle for them. They don't understand why they should pay you 5K for a website when they can pay 10 bucks a month using Wix or similar services. And I don't blame the clients for not understanding this, but basically what I'm trying to say when I meet such a potential client and they bring this to the table, what I tell them is something a little like this. What if I gave you a canvas, some brushes and some paint? Could you draw me a Picasso? You get the idea. See, they're talking about tools and I'm talking about a skill set. And usually by giving them this image, it really helps for them to understand what the difference is. Now, the next thing I hate about web design is the endless race to the bottom. Now, this goes hand in hand with my previous point, but there are many new companies like Upwork and Fiverr that change the narrative because now the clients come and say, well, I have 200 bucks for this job. Who wants the job? 
And what happens is that there is an army of people that actually need the money and they're ready to work for peanuts. And the thing is that it's bringing the whole industry down. So in the mind of the clients of those platforms, when they see that someone is ready to create a professional website for 50 bucks, how do you think they're going to feel when you quote them a 5k estimate? Now, of course, for us, we know it's like comparing a toy car with an actual Tesla that you can drive, but for them, they don't see the difference and I don't blame them. It's hard to understand that price difference because for them, a website is a website. And that's why I spend a lot of time to explain all things to my potential clients. Now, another race to the bottom is the creative race to the bottom. Now, we live in outstanding times with tools like WordPress, plugins, and themes. But if being a web professional means purchasing a theme and slapping the client's logo on it, it means that we are less and less creative because we only rely on the job of super creatives that build those templates. And our creativity is like a muscle that we never use. If you ever seen people that stay seated for years and see the state of their muscles, well, that's what happens with creativity when all you do is using pre-made work. Now, there's nothing wrong with using themes once in a while because, hey, we need to make a living and sometimes clients don't have the budget for custom websites. I understand that. But once in a while, as web designer, we should create our own. We should exercise that creative muscle so that we can better and we can innovate and not just follow trends. Now, one thing that might surprise you is the fact that I actually love platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, and Wix, because usually once clients have been through those platforms, they understand they get what they pay for. So after that, it's way easier for me to convince them to pay me a premium to build them a really professional website. Because at this stage, they understand the difference between a website and a website. They understand the value of professional work. Now, I know that some people absolutely kill it on Fiverr and Upwork, no hate for them, Kudos to them, it's great as a professional. If you make a ton of money on those platforms, kudos to you. I'm just talking about the overall mass of people on those platforms and the trouble with the change of narrative in that industry. But if like me, you know how to turn it and use it to your advantage to actually convince new high paying clients, then I guess it's not such a bad thing. So is web design still a good career nowadays? Hmm. It's a fantastic career choice. It can change your life. You can go from no degree to making a good living. And if at one point you decide to become your own boss, it can give you so much freedom. Now, if you want to know my process when it comes to converting more high paying clients for web design, I've created a video about that and I put the link in the description below and in the video card at the end of this video. Now, I'm curious, what are the things that you love and hate about web design? Please let me know in the comments. Now, I hope that this video is going to help you to make the right choices when it comes to web design and web design career. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up as it really, really helps growing the channel. And of course, if you want more web design content coming your way, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish when I got started. So I really hope this content is going to help you. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.